Sekou and Lang's Road Trip, presented by Marriott Rewards here in Oakland. Oakland High School. Look at the man, Damien Lillard. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. How you yeah, doing? Good. Back to school. <laughs> Back to school night. Back in the class. Um, so much attention is paid to uh, where, where guys are from and what they're doing to give back to their community. But for you, this had to be a surreal day, being able to yeah. come back and get the jersey up on the wall in the gym and have the kids going crazy. What's it like when you get to this point in your career? I mean, it's for me, I, I knew about the, the event all along, so I was excited about it, just the, the fact that we was doing it for the students, you know, and they would be able to lead a class and come right down there to, you know, something unexpected, you know, and I knew it would be a big deal, so that was cool, but... Uh, when I actually got here, like I was like, man, it's crazy. You know, I actually played here, and I see yeah. a lot of my family here, and I'm at a completely different point in my life now, um, as to the the last time I was, you know, I shared this gym with them, right. and seeing the the retired teachers that was here when I was here, that left and they came back just for this, and you know, some of the ones still here um, from the time I went to high school here was, um, it was good to see them, but. Um, I think a lot of times, like you said, people talk about where they come from and, and giving back, but you in position to do it from a distance, um, right. you know, with the kind of the kind of money we make and um, the influence and all the, the partners that we have. Uh, but it meant a lot to me to, you know, come here and have the time to do it before I play the game and, and also be present. Uh, that was that was what, what made it real cool for me. You mentioned seeing retired teachers. Did you know they were going to retire your number today? Um, I knew about it, but I mean, I I do so many things right. and interviews and all that stuff that it, it slipped my mind. You know, I really wasn't <laughs> thinking about it. And then um, on the way over here, me and my guy JR was talking about it. And he was like, they're going to retire your jersey. And I was like, what? And he was like, you didn't know that? And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> um, but it, you know, it's it's an honor uh, to, to have my jersey raised up there, especially with you know, so many talented players coming through yeah. here before me. Do you think about the journey more? At this stage now, like you said, when you come back and can reflect on all the people that you see, the faces you see in that gym, and see the young people that are walking in your footsteps, you know, coming through these same hallways you came through, does it does it sink into you more now, seeing that from your perspective? Yeah, it sink in a lot more. I think when I first got in the league, I was trying so hard to be one of the best players and trying to stick in the league that I didn't, I didn't even really look and see what I had done. You know, mm -hmm. that I had got a scholarship from here and got drafted in a, in a lottery and was doing well in the NBA, all those things I kind of was expecting for myself. So I didn't really pay attention to what I was actually doing. And I wasn't thinking about the people that might um, be impacted, you know, or how people that I grew up around might be looking like, man, Dame is really doing this. And Dame really did that because I'm just focused on what I'm doing. Right. Um, and coming back here, it, it also helps you realize that you know, and they look at you and they like, man, you really, you really did it. You know, I can't believe this and I'm proud of you and you hearing it. And people tell you it all the time, you right. know, like when I was in New York, people was like, man, I'm happy for you. And, it, and then you come home and it's different because they looking in your eyes like, man, you know, because right. they was there for the, the beginning of it and they, they can appreciate it because they was there when it started. So um, as far as that, you know, I think that that makes it, um, you know, real powerful and, and real meaningful. We have some questions from people watching on Facebook right now. This person's name is Lucky Try. They said, I grew up in Oakland, too. Um, what's your favorite memory from high school? My favorite memory from high school? I think my, I'm not going to say this is my favorite, but it's, it's one of my favorites. Um, I'm, I'm, everybody that know me know I'm the kind of person I just stick to, stick to what I do. Right. Like I play basketball. I like to rap. I chill, I, you know, I'm a homebody. Um, but when I came to Oakland High, a lot of my friends, they were in this program called VAMP. And VAMP was like a futuristic thing. It was like they had a, you know, they was building skateboard ramps and doing a lot of stuff that was like, that they had to do on their own. And it was uh, K-Dub, who was also here, one of the teachers. Um, he just always had his students doing stuff outside of what the, the curriculum was or whatever the, the school district you know, had them teaching. It was it was different stuff. And I remember one day I walked into their class, you know, and, and all my friends was in the classroom and they had like got done fin uh, building this, this skateboard ramp. And right. it was like a, a half, half like pipe. a half yeah. pipe. And um, I walked in there and they was all trying to do it. They was all on the skateboard trying to do it and people falling. And I was they was like, damn, come try it. And I was like, man, I don't, <laughs> I don't skateboard. Right. And then I kept watching and kept watching. And then before I knew it, I was up 
in that classroom every day because I had figured it out and I was just, every day I was up there doing it and it was like, they got me to do something I wasn't comfortable doing. Right. And then I always found myself just wandering towards that classroom, like trying to see what they was doing next. And, um, you know, that's one of my best memories. I'm just glad you didn't fall. <laughs> I fell a couple of times. Oh, yeah? I mean, but... Nothing bad. Who am I? I wasn't nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin came off. <laughs> Benjamin came off says, what's been the best moment of your young NBA career thus far? <sighs> Man, these hard questions. I think I know um, the answer to this one. What, what do you think the answer is? Well, I think people in Houston might log off right now. <laughs> That's, you helped me right there. That was definitely one of the, the top moments. Right. Um, but I think the best moment of my career uh, didn't come so far. It hasn't come on the court. Mm. It was um, Thanksgiving. I was able to bring all my family from home to Portland. Uh, we had a day off. And, you know, I got a, a big luxury bus and got all my family here to Portland, and we had hotel rooms, and uh, we had Thanksgiving together at my house. You know, it was like 70 people in my family out there, and we had Thanksgiving. Then the next day, we um, had a game, so I played in the game. Then after the game, we all went skating after the game. <laughs> then the next day, we had off. We, you know, I rented a movie theater, and we all went and watched a couple movies, so it was like that was a... That was a highlight moment for me because it was like the first time I was able to, to do that. That's cool. Um, you know, um, being in that position. This goes to kind of, we didn't mention the concert we just went to <laughs> at the school. Like the people at home didn't see. Yeah. Fetty and all these other guys, Esco. Um, Alex Ruiz says, Damian, what do you think you can communicate through music that you can't communicate as a basketball player? Uh, I think as a, a basketball player, you know, that's that's more for basketball players or, or any other athlete. Right. Um, but in my music, I share, I like to, to story, do storytelling and you know, talk about the struggle and the yeah. things that I experienced. And I think being able to do that allows you know, the, the normal student who catches the bus to school like I did and might get in a scuffle here and there like I did and struggle with your grades a little bit like I did. You know, and I can express that to them and say, I did all these things too, and I struggled like this, and this is what I liked, and you know, just share that experience through the, through the words, and I still got here, you know? So I think in the music, you could kind of share something that they might be going through and, and yeah. reach them that way, but then at the end of the day, you can still be successful in what you want to be successful in, as opposed to basketball. The Oakland High basketball team is gonna watch that more than every other student, right. you know what I mean? So I think that's the, the biggest difference. Um. Kayled, and I'm not going to try to mispronounce his last name. Uh, what made you love basketball? How did that start? Um, I think it just started from um, being around my, my cousins. You know, I got a lot of cousins, and uh, when I was younger, we had a, a tree out in front of my grandmother's house, and they'd always be out there playing, and I wanted to do everything they did. So, um, you know, I remember a day I, I faked sick and didn't go home, didn't go to school. <laughs> Uh, my brother and, and my older cousin John, they stayed home too because they had to, to watch me. And that was a, the first time they actually taught me like the rules and what a travel was and right. double dribbling and all that. And, when, and then like I was on the court playing with them. You know, I was young and they was much older and I had to figure it out. And I just enjoyed that competition and um, being up against it, you know, playing against older kids and trying to remember the rules and, and stuff like that. And then from that point on, it was like, whether they was there or not, I had a ball and I was I was hooping. Yeah. You mentioned uh, upstairs when I heard you talking about you went to a couple of schools before you came here to Oakland High. Yeah. Um, was coming here a game changer for you, not just in your academic career, athletic career, but just in life, just getting a different breath yeah. of what you might be capable of as a young man and, and what the future might hold for you? Definitely. I think just the first school I went to, um, was in more of a suburban neighborhood because um, I had a family member that lived out there and my mom and my dad didn't want me to go to school in Oakland because it was so much going on. And I went there uh, for middle school and one year of high school and it was just like, it wasn't working out. I mean, I was, I was uncomfortable. I was getting, getting home late all the time, catching the bus back and forth, having to get up at five to catch the bus and be on time to school. And then I left there to go to a private school here, um, St. Joe's, where Jason Kidd went. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I went there, it was like, I really didn't fit in. It was like, 
I was the opposite of everybody there. Right. Um, and I, I learned a lot about myself while I was there, but I just, I felt like I was um, watching my, my future go away when I was there. So I was, you know, begging my dad, like, let me go to Ohio, let me go to Ohio. Because all my best friends went to Ohio. So he finally was like, all right, you know, I'm going I'm to let you go. And when I came here, it was like, at lunchtime, I was with my friends and laughing and joking. And right. you walk in and you in the hallway and people got their iPod in. It ain't as many rules. It was, you know, it was just better. And um, I was comfortable. I was happy being here. Um, so, I mean, I, that was like the turning point for sure. Yeah. Um, Manuel says, what drives you to be clutch when it matters? What drives me to be clutch? Yeah. It, I mean, just wanting to, wanting to win. I think you, when you really truly want to win, that you'll do anything to, to make that happen. Yeah. And, you know, when you believe in yourself, and you know that you've put in enough time to the, to the game, um, you feel like you always going to come up big. And in those situations, I always feel like I'm going to come up big. And, you know, the, the work gives you confidence in, in yourself. And so when those moments come, you feel like you're going to rise to the, to the occasion and it's going to go in your favor. But then when it doesn't work out, you had a confidence where it's like, well, it didn't work out this time. Next time, it right. got to work. And I feel like that's, that's just cemented in my mind. You, you said know? the work gives you confidence, but I think a lot of times we don't see the work. You know, we don't see you yeah. in the summertime every day working on your floaters or, yeah. um, like they said, before the draft, you knew you were going to be lottery toward the end of the draft yeah. process. You were still working out every single day. I think that probably is what separates you from a lot of people also is just having that whatever it is that makes you keep working at it. Yeah, I think when you, I mean, you look at the best, you look at the best players um, in the NBA and you look at LeBron James and, and Steph Curry and right. Kevin Durant and guys like that, what you know of them is that they work hard. Yeah. And that's why they were able to be so confident and um, perform at the level that they do every night. And it's not because they just arrogant and confident right. for no reason. It's something behind it. You know, they put the time in and in their mind and their heart, they know I worked really hard at this, so it's going to work out. Yeah. And then you see other guys where the confidence comes and goes is because they don't know in their heart that, you know, I did, I put the time in, right. you know, 100%. And I think that's, you know, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. I think everybody in Oakland, especially Portland and around the league, knows that you put the work in. It's good to see you come back and get to enjoy some of this while it's yeah. happening. You know, yeah. not 20, 30 years later, but right. in, in real time. So we appreciate you letting us come and um, kick around these hallways a little bit. It looks good. The gym looks good. Appreciate you that, know, man. I appreciate y'all coming. Man. Yeah. The teacher's okay. in here showing off this, <laughs> this room. He was, he was very proud of his yeah. new, new rooms. So. Yeah, and the studio we had when I was in when I was in high school was, it was like you got to walk through a classroom and then it was a little room like that, but everything out here was smashed <laughs> into there. That's, that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Listen, Damian Lillard joining us here. Sacred Lions Road Trip presented by Thank Mayor Rewards yep. here at Oakland High. Getting it in.